I've been teaching people to fish professionally for 15 years. And despite that, no one's ever asked me, what's the best landing net? Or are rubber mesh nets better? Or what landing net is best for carrying? Blah, 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 blah. I don't know why other YouTubers get asked all these questions by all their followers. <laughs> I don't. Going back to some of those earlier questions that I said tongue in cheek, uh, what is the best landing net? Um, there isn't one. There's a best landing net for every situation. And that's why there's so many on the market. An obvious starting point is matching the size of the net to the size of the fish you anticipate catching. Pretty obvious, I know. But a lot of coarse fisheries, especially carp fish, will, will actually stipulate how big your net needs to be in order to fish there. It's one of their rules. If you're new to fishing, there's one thing I'd like you to take away from this video. Please don't be tempted to go out there and buy the cheapest net you can buy. Those ones you get from Argos and Aldi, they're little trout fold away nets for like a tenner. Um, because it's just going to lead to heartbreak. Either the net is going to break or the fish is going to get damaged or it's not going to be long enough. Line will snap. I'm going to cover all the different types of landing nets that I use. Um, but it's also perhaps worth mentioning that sports fishermen, uh, as in lure fishermen and fly fishermen, quite often will dissuade the use of a landing net altogether on the grounds that it can remove fish slime and that you should minimise the amount of time you're actually taking fish out of the water. Um, landing nets can and will sometimes cause fin damage. If you're using, you know, bass lures, and it's the same with dead baiting for pike, because if you've got a flying treble at the back, gets caught in the net, um, pike are notorious for rolling like a crocodile in that net, and those trebles can then do a, an awful lot of damage. Quite often, if I'm fishing um, in a stationary position down on the river, course fishing, I might actually take two nets. I'll have something like that on a very light um, handle, that's for my roach, my dace, my perch, my bleak, etc. And something like that to the side. This is a Drennan 22 inch, I think it is, I can't remember. Uh, specialist landing net for landing things like barbel, chub, carp. If you're not in a fixed position fishing, one of the questions you need to ask yourself is how good is your landing net for portability? Um, here I've got a, um, a trout pan net, nice and light. I've got a red handle in case I ever lose it in a river so I can find it easily enough. And you'll see I've also put some pipe lagging around it so that it floats again. So if it goes in the river, it's not going to sink to the bottom. And that's attached to my fly vest on a leash so that I can put it down and rest that fish while I'm sorting out tangles or taking a fly out, getting a camera, whatever. What you've got to bear in mind is that if you lose a net over the side of a boat, that can be a day over. So that's why I leash them. Right, so for my lure fishing, um, I'm roving and I'll, I'll be carrying this jacket and on the back I've got a magnet, um, quick release magnet. I think I got that off Amazon. It's a st extra strong so it can carry the, the extra weight of this bigger net. This is a, a Corum snapper rubberized net and it's big enough to hold pike up into well into double figures. The rubberized uh, mesh makes the net quite heavy, hence the, the, the strong magnet, but it um, means that hooks are less likely to get caught in it compared to a normal uh, mesh net and it also means that you're less likely to remove slime off the fish. It comes off very easily. It's a quick release single hand um, mechanism on the front. You pull that down that opens up and it's telescopic to three meters and it's a nice strong net. Something you need to consider is the strength of the connection from the handle to the net. Some are designed to be lifted out the water like that with considerable weight in the net. Others are designed for you to actually lift out the water with your hand over the net so you're not putting all the weight on this. Some landing net handles are designed to be light and they will snap if you try and lift a fish out the water like that. This is a nice strong net handle. So this is the similar one. Again, rubberized net, but it can be set to a, a certain tilt. Now by unscrewing the handle, I can then do that handle back up and as you can see I can have a net that shape. The beauty of that is something like Weymouth Harbour for mullet um, or off some of those locks for um, for perch and what have you I can do a vertical drop to land that slightly equivalent to a drop net and this handle is a Daiwa um, telescopic and this goes to five meters. Comes with a handy strap as well so I'll wear this one actually around me. Too heavy to have on a magnet. Something to bear in mind is that the bigger the holes in the size of the net, the uh, 
easier it is for water to pass through. And that's why salmon nets have such a big hole. Really fast water, you don't want big, uh, you don't want small holes. Rubberized nets are much easier to wash off after your session or after you've landed a fish. You're, you're much less likely to, to end up having holes nibbled into your net by mice. So rubberized nets, they are better, but they are heavier. You can also buy really lightweight ones like this that are hook resistant. You'll see the mesh is square and they advertise it as a hook resistant net which is hilarious because I get more hooks caught in that than any other net. I think it's because they've got the extra fabric around the edge here. So yeah, I'm not gonna endorse that one. But what I will endorse is this. Nice and lightweight, it's a shallow, what you call a shallow pan net, so that when you're match fishing and sat down, you don't have to put your hand all the way down like that to get the fish out. What I love about it is it's got this quick release system. So it's screwed on here, and it just slides in like that. And when you're in a tight space, that's dead handy. Uh, that landing net handle is a census um, crazy landing net handle. Someone donated this actually to Summerhays Fishing Club. But as I say, we take safety really important and that um, advantage of being able to take the net off and put the, the um, handle down is a big plus from a coaching perspective. So whoever donated that, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Right, so what else have we got? Um, folding nets. I'm not a fan of this one, so the Fox Rage one, it's very heavy. Um, I'd probably use it on a boat. It packs away nicely on a boat, but other than that, I'm not a huge fan of it. It, it sets up easily. The handle's quite short, but it has also got this lovely big deep net to it for holding bigger fish. This is the Drennan Twist Lock um, series. Very popular amongst barbell anglers because it's so strong, um, but can also be extended to three meters this one uh, it's just a twist lock you pull it out twist it that locks so when i'm roving on a river um trying to find some barbel or, or dead baiting for pike or whatever uh i like to travel as light as possible i've got a nice light chair um, quite a heavy seat box that goes on my back and a quiver for my rods and bank sticks there often isn't really room for a net and that's where this comes in handy this is the conventional t-net fold away t-net that slides down into the inside of my quiver with my umbrella, which is fantastic. Nice, big, huge drop on it. Another thing is um, measuring nets. This is the Daiwa one. It's got a nice measuring inside the mesh. So when it's flat, flat surface, you can measure your perch. You can also buy nets with integrated weighing scales in the handle, so you don't have to transfer the fish. McLean are the only uh, manufacturers of nets uh, with reputation that I know, um, do that. And they're quite popular in the sort of salmon and sea trout fraternity. They're very expensive, but they're, they're good nets. So this is a, a handy net. It's a partially collapsing um, specimen net. A great net, but unfortunately it doesn't fit in, in any of my quivers. Um, how to get more subscribers? Yeah, so, oh yeah. So last but not least, um, if you can add a like, uh, or a comment that'd be appreciated. Please consider subscribing and pressing that notification button. And to everyone out there that's um, left some nice comments, thank you very much. Yeah. I'm really glad you proved me wrong with that lure as well. That's best, the best part. Yeah. I spooked one in the margins as I went up to go and cast. About a similar sort of size, actually. Olé. They're long, aren't they? They're quite long, actually. <laughs>